Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. You can also become a bitter pill or a spoonful of sugar by visiting patreon.com forward slash The Bitter Truth and get some fabulous swag to make your life better. Uh, today, I'm excited. We've got a, a guest of the of, of, uh, today on the show. I can speak English. And uh, awesome person, <laughs> uh, fabulous uh, human being, New York Times bestselling author, and journalist, among other, uh, among many of her books, uh, The Stranger She Loved and Picture Perfect, The Jodi Arias Story. She's also an award-winning journalist and has been a regular on various and sundry TV shows. You've seen her, you know you, you love her. Shanna Hogan, how are you? <laughs> Very good. And for longtime listeners of you, uh, that they will know the connection uh, between you and me uh, will forever be the Jodi Arias case. Yeah, probably. Um, I'd like to think as we move on with our lives, um, we get we get more than another connection, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you there? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So yeah. But um, yeah. So well, I mean, let's talk a little bit about how you got into all this because you 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 went to you went to ASU and you know you just wanted to be a journalist, right? And so how so what happened? Yeah, I mean, I, um, <laughs> now I teach uh, at adjunct at ASU, and so I like help you know people kind of figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. But yeah, back in two thousand and two two thousand one, graduated from high school, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life, but I knew I loved writing, and uh, I, I happened to be drawn to some of these true crime stories. And so I started, uh, I, I went to ASU, got a job as a journalist or working as a daily paper, the East Valley Tribune, uh, went on to work for a magazine, stayed there for seven years. Um, during that time, I wrote about crime cases happening in my backyard and ended up getting a book deal out of one of them. And then uh, Jody Arias happened and I just uh, knew right away that this was a big story, but Unlike some big stories in the news, like where like someone like Casey Anthony, uh, you know, uh, her daughter goes missing and and it's big news from the day that she disappears to the day that her body's found. For some weird reason, Jodi Arias was this random case where, um, you know, it was popular for about like 10 minutes and then uh, no one talked about it for five or six years until the trial happened. Well, that's so, why, because that, that's kind of why, though, isn't it? Because she she was able to push off the trial for five years. Yeah. And, well, and, and the news cycle was a short attention span. It's like a it's like a it's like a kid with a with a brand new toy. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> I've almost become kind of disillusioned in journalism and uh, period. But uh, also the justice system in Arizona, if you're up for a death penalty case, it takes about five years because they almost never have you out without on bail. So they figure you're already in jail, um, you know, might as well just wait as long as possible. And there's also like a whole thing with like death penalty qualified attorneys in Arizona, you have to have a certain um, attorney to be able to represent you. And so it takes a long time. It takes about five years. And so if I hadn't um, gotten in on that case and started writing about it when I did, I know I don't definitely wouldn't have gotten the book deal because then it blew up to be this huge thing where it would have been a much bigger author that ended up taking on that book. But you also wrote other books before this, right? So this was not, yeah. This, yeah so you already had a reputation, right? Yeah, well, I had, I'd written an Arizona case, and it was just like, you know, a normal paperback. Um, but uh, I, I think I'm a pretty good writer. And what I um, kind of bring to the table is uh, turning, you know, true facts into a uh, narrative nonfiction, and um, t being able to tell a story in a way that's entertaining, um, but also informative that uses all the real facts. So um this was Jody Arias just happened to be my second book. I've gone on to write two others and I'm working on my fifth book now. Which, the, and, which um, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And also I was a co-author on a, on a crime book compilation as well. So what, what's the new book about? Uh, it's a New Jersey case. Um, very dark story. Uh, two brothers in business together. Um, one was like the, uh, leader of the business and the owner of the business. Um, the other one, um, was kind of like grew up in his shadow, even though he was the older brother. And then, um, one day in Thanksgiving in 2018, oh, it's such a dark story. Um, uh, the one brother's house was set on fire and his entire family was found dead inside that house. Wow. And that same, um, day, 
uh, his, the other brother's house caught fire. So police suspected it right away. Um, the guy who ended up getting arrested tried to paint it as a, they were both being targeted by some sort of mafia type hit. And, um, but he was arrested right away on this crime and, um, uh, and, uh, and now is being charged on a quadruple murder, which, um, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of waiting on the trial to start because of everything has been on hold because of COVID. Right. Right. And so, yeah, you can't, you can't zoom a trial. No. Well, even, I mean, I, I, I intended to go to the trial, but it's, uh, they're not pulling juries right now in sure. New Jersey at least. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, and then it's, so how did you seem like kind of a sunny person? So like, how did you get kind of <laughs> attracted to like the, cause these, these are pretty grisly crimes. I mean, and you've written a few books on this, right? Like, so yeah, you know, uh, like a guy it, kills his wife or whatever, you know, like, you know, how, it, like how did you, cause I'm kind of squeamish. I read, I'm like with the Travis thing. And honestly, you know, to be, to be transparent, this is the first time I've really talked about it in any way. Other I know. than the stuff that I, know. I did. I so extraordinarily privileged that you have decided to open up to me. And I, 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 I think we plan on spending half of this interview talking about your yeah. experience. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's like, well, your experience too. I mean, but the, the, you know, my thing was always whatever I did was just in that world and I didn't do it in my comedy and the novel that I put out a few years back wasn't about this at all. <clears throat> the show's almost two years old, done like a hundred odd episodes. Um, the most I've ever mentioned is if I was talking to like a psychologist or something and they're talking about herd mentalities or something like that, I would mention that I, you know, was involved in a murder trial a few years back and that there was a, a big hoopla about it. But, and I, I, I would never name the name. It was never more than a couple of sentences. And it was always pretty much the same shtick. I just didn't really talk about it except for, you know, and honestly, when I was doing that Dr. Drew shit, I didn't really know anybody watched that show. <laughs> you know, it was like, I know it, it was Who like the last, it was like the last thing that, you know, we, we both know sky, you know, and anyway, mm -hmm. long story short, she was on us, a lot of us to try to, you know, come out and everything. And I just didn't do any of them. And then finally, when Drew came up, I'm like, I like him, you know, mm -hmm. I'll have, I'll have a bash. I, you know, he, I'd see him around Pasadena. And when I was in grad school, I worked at this one restaurant and he was the godfather to the owner's kid. So he'd come oh, in all wow. the, yeah. So he'd come in all the time and he was on love line and stuff and we knew who he was yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he was a cool guy. And he was just, he was a nice guy at the time before he kind of went off the rails. Like, see, he seemingly, he seemingly has gone off the rails a little bit last few years, but um, yeah. at the time in Pasadena in like the nineties, he was just Dr. Drew, you know, and he was just like this cool, cogent, sober guy. And mm -hmm. so, you know, flash forward a few years later, well, more infused now, like almost 20. But when, when I got that, that one, which was the last one. Cause I said no to everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, I'll have a bash on Drew. Sure. And I just honestly thought, cause it was H I looked it up. I was like, HLN, what the fuck is HLN? Who's I know, this? right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it was, I thought I took, I took it to be like ESPN seven, you know, where, where they, it's like <laughs> the, the lock. Yeah. ESPN like the Ocho. ESPN. Yeah. From dodgeball. It's like, I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, this has gotta be like, this is like dodgeball. It's like, you know, they're, they're, they're doing, they're doing the, the criminal version of log rolling. There's nothing, there's nothing right? really, you know, and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden, it just fucking took off, you know, and, and mm -hmm. he became this number one dude all of a sudden overnight because he was on this before anybody was kind of on it, you know, and mm -hmm. it got kind of weird, you know. Well, I want to say uh, two things going back to, to what you said in the beginning. Number one, um, you know, you know, being just like an individual uh, like yourself, uh, you could have completely exploited that and been Abe you know, the Jody Arias ex-boyfriend guy who was on all these shows and helped promote your own radio show. So I've always respected that about you, that you've never really used that, um, you know, because um, I'm very cognizant as, as we've talked about before, that this was a real person who was really murdered and it right. affected a lot of people sure and, and still does to this day, you know, his poor family um, celebrates every holiday without him. Sure. And, um, you know, no matter what led up to the circumstances, I've, I've never uh, written a book where I've forgotten about that. And, <laughs> and earlier you said I have, a, I have a sunny personality, and I really do. Um, and it's sometimes very hard to maintain when I'm working on these books, and they get to me personally. They, sure. they, you know, they, um, they affect me deeply. I remember praying on the day that the Jody Arias trial started um, and, and asking God, you know, and even a super religious person, but just asking God for guidance and doing this the right way, because I didn't want to be an ambulance chaser type, um, ex 
you know, exploitative person who, you know, uh, was putting out negativity in the world. Like if I was going to write this book, I wanted to write a good book, but basically, um, I got, I, I got, I never, ever have thought I'd be a true crime writer. I always wanted to write books. I've always enjoyed writing. I've never enjoyed writing about myself. I just like writing. I love, I, I'm, I'm kind of an information junkie, which I would assume someone like you as a podcast host is uh, similar. You know, you love hearing people's stories and learning more about um, you know, what makes people, people tick and stuff like that. And so I've kind of just like um, gone into that and just um, knew I wanted to write a book and discovered that it's a lot easier to get published in nonfiction than fiction. So oh, yeah. 100%. I, yeah. So I set out with um, the intent of teaching myself to write a good true crime book and mm-hmm. like, um, you know, uh, what, what was interesting about these stories to me. And it was telling the life story of the victim and also the investigation part of all these cases was very fascinating to me. Like the CSI, um, it, you know, so and many of the shows on TV are mm-hmm. like murder shows. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like what, how do they put these pieces together? How do they find that one little tiny piece of DNA? Uh, well, in Jody's case, how did they find that myriad of hair and blood and DNA uh, that connects, well, and then you genius, know. and then genius that she was, she threw the camera in the washing machine. You know? I know. And this, well, you know, thing, but- I, I mean, it was a comedy of errors, not a comedy. That's a bad term, but it, just, yeah. you know, it's like you just drove through the desert. One would think that you go back through the desert and throw the camera in the fucking desert, right? Well, but- yeah, and I've always thought about that though, and remember that was two thousand eight. Did you think that you could um, delete something off your phone in two thousand eight, and it would? like ever be able to be recovered again because i i don't think i did well here's you know? the thing here but here's the thing though she didn't delete all of it though that's yeah that, that, it, it, she deleted all but three or four pictures mm-hmm. and then she threw it in the wash so she probably yeah. you know i don't know what she did but she probably scrolled back and then like looked at like the the, the sexy time pictures yeah and then and then the gruesome ones she thought she got all of them gone yeah but then, you know, yeah. but, but then it even dawned on her to take the camera with it, which, which I was always grateful for in some, some kind of cosmic way. I know. Because yeah. I mean, we, t- we talked about this before and, and you know, I'm going to rip off a Bill Burr joke here, but mm-hmm. the fact is, is that, you know, Scott Peterson went to jail within three weeks. You know, mm-hmm. when it's a guy, what? it's mm-hmm. over with her. It's like people were, she had fans, you know, I got called. Everything. I know. I got called everything like from a fat bald Jew to you name it. And people were like. <laughs> just pissed and angry and oh you're just mad because you didn't get the fucker and i'm like wow that's yeah I, it's, geez i i didn't get to fuck a lot of girls i didn't testify in a murder <laughs> trial you know it's so like is that your logic i'm like good it's times so dark it it, it, it people are know, just bizarro you know people are bizarre but scott peterson has his own following too in uh, well, a scary weird way yeah uh i mean i i've met a girl who was like i don't believe that she did that he did it and i was like how can you not believe scott peterson it's like did fucking what he ted did. bundy he had fans. i know ted exactly. bundy had teen beat cover chick fans standing in front of the jail oh i don't think he did it but the only point i was going to make really quick it is it, it, it is a different metric when it's a guy Mm-hmm. Right, like it when, very when, much is. When, it, 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 like it's like the the Bill Burr joke I was about to steal was you know if if I got my dick cut off by my girlfriend, and mm-hmm. it got thrown into the garbage disposal, it's a punchline. Mm-hmm. It's like hey, Stumpy, yeah, you know, you know, Tonight Show guys are making jokes about it, but if it's a girl, and I took yeah. my, and I chopped my girlfriend's breast and put it in a dryer, all of exactly. a sudden the NFL has to wear a headband with an effeminate color, you know, and yeah. it becomes that whole thing. And that's, oh, and, and that's what I saw with this that really kind of angered me. And I had girlfriends mm-hmm. of mine, friends of mine, friends of mine that said with a straight face to me, well, he cheated on her. He probably deserved it. And that, that was Grown the ups. part of it all. Yeah. yeah that- Grown ups. They're 19 years old, 40, 45 year old women. You know, people, you know, the whole biblical saying, you know, that, that, Thou who is without sin, uh, I'm not very good at this, but, you know, you cast the first stone. Sure. Uh, you know, how, how can you look at someone and say they deserved to die for being a young man who, who did lie, who did cheat, and who didn't, he wasn't a great guy in that relationship. No who one fucking cares. Yeah. Yeah. He, he didn't deserve to die. And, and she wasn't an 18-year-old, 19-year-old innocent girl. No, she he was wasn't. Not. 
No, he wasn't molesting children. He picked a, a 27, 28 year old person and I'm her age. Like uh, I'm with like w- within one year of her age. Yeah. So when I was writing the book, I was imagining like how my life could have unfolded that I could have been in that position in her life. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, it's impossible to, uh, to really put yourself in that point of view. Like I, you know, I have friends that, you know, I would talk it through and they would be like, Shanna, you know, this guy's using you get away from him, you know, like run away. Like, what are you doing? And, uh, and there'd be enough people in my life that would give me a good advice. But, uh, I always found it interesting that you were like one of the only people that came forward to talk about Jody as knowing her because either she didn't have any friends or she didn't have any friends that were willing to come and stand up for her when the trial got crazy. Well, last thing is I didn't really stand up for, her. you know, I mean, the, the, no, um, no, no, not that you did, yeah, not that you yeah. did, but you were just, I mean, one of the few associates that was even willing to talk about knowing her before the murder. You well, know the only I mean? reason, and the only, I wasn't gonna, you know, the only reason mm-hmm. I did was because I waited two months before I contacted the prosecutor. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I did was because, quite honestly, she did this uh, TV show. She was in jail for about a month. Yes. And mm-hmm. she did Inside Edition. Wanzi! The, the audience can't <laughs> see this, but... Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> the bobblehead of Juan. I like Do you have him. One- I don't you have, have one. one. Too? I should oh. get one. I should get one. Well, you know, no, okay. no, Sky Hughes got that for me. I like him. Okay, and I don't care about his sexual harassment shit or whatever. If mm-hmm. it comes out and he did it, okay, fine. He got fired, whatever. But it still doesn't mm-hmm. mean Jody Harris didn't kill the guy. No, and it, it still doesn't mean he was an excellent prosecutor. Goddamn right he was. He, he, yeah. he, he, was, like, he was like Al Pacino in Justice for All. Fucking love that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He just went off. <laughs> this out of order. You're out of order. The whole court's out of order. <laughs> anyway, exactly, yeah. But, but, the thing, but the thing about all that was is when I saw that Inside Edition thing, um, that was the yeah. thing that, the cockiness. Was, I got ang- yeah, because she was talking about ninjas all of this. And I had read the police I know. report. And I read the police report, and she was talking about ninjas. And then that's when I just got really angry. And I was just like, well, fuck this. It was around 4 in the afternoon. And so, you know, I, I called Maricopa County. And, you know, it took me a while. It took them a while to find out who, who Juan was because they didn't even know this case was even being done, you know. And so wow. they finally – and he talked to me – the first time he talked to me about 40 minutes – and he said, he, and he was, you know, because he's got a sense of humor. He said, well, you know what I got to ask you in these tender moments? And I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. Ask me. I don't care. You, you be the lawyer, which is what my, one of my lawyer buddies told me was, listen, tell him your story. Let him be the lawyer. Let him figure it out. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, why'd you wait this long? And I said, because honestly, all I ever had since we, we, we went out a few times, she told me she couldn't see him anymore. We stayed friendly on the phone for like 20 months. Never saw each other physically, socially again, except for a couple of business events. So I never asked her out for coffee. I never asked her out for a drink. And so I'm like, I told him, I go, I hadn't seen her physically in a long time. So I'm thinking you have people that have seen her do weird shit that were more valuable than me. You know, that's why. But then I thought if this ended up being like an OJ thing and I had Mm -hmm. any ounce of anything, if I had one phrase or one sentence that could have helped you lock this up and I didn't do it, I would have felt shitty. And Mm -hmm. that's why I called him. And and then it was like a five-year it was like a five year. We're going to have a trial. We're not going to have a trial. So if I, you know, I know, and I know. Finally, I, they had I the left trial. a job for <laughs> yeah, and, and expecting and then, the trial. Yeah. And then, you know, and then they finally had the trial and that was that, you know, and then, and then the penalty phase was what pissed me off. You know, now that, that, let me ask you though, um, someone who had knew her personally and you say, um, you saw that for, you know, the inside edition interview and you saw the affect, um, can you, could you see a difference with her? Like that was a clearly her lying affect versus the person that you knew that seemed to be genuine at some points. Like it was just, it's, it's a bizarre thing to watch that and how she, you know, um, answered well, I mean, questions she wasn't, and some stuff. You know, I, but was she, was she, was, was, she the, was she weird always or was well, this? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, and this is the thing. It's not like she was a, you, know, you use the word genuine. You know, it's not like she was really um, a warm person. She always kind of mm-hmm. had an uh, like a like a like a pretentiousness. Mm-hmm. She she kind of used big words incorrectly and things like that. Uh, yeah, I noticed yeah. that too. And so you know, at but the she, time she learned the Mormon lingo and um, things like um, 
now I can't think of the word, but it, w- it means like empowerment or enlightenment um, right. that, she, yeah, she would misuse all the time on yeah. the stand. And, and, yeah. and, and so it was just, it was just shit like that. So when I saw the inside edition, it wasn't that much of a difference other than she was being kind of obviously combative and, and, and defensive because, you know, now she's being accused for murder. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and so, but yeah, I didn't really see it. You know? And at the time I was 43, right? And she was 26. Mm-hmm. So when, when, People would ask me, you know, well, what'd you see in her? I go, well, at the time I was 43 and she was 26 mm-hmm. and she had a great ass and she was cute. And she was, and that was it. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't like I ditched a perfectly good fiance and, and chased some girl at the gym. I was single, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> like it wasn't mm-hmm. like I was some, you know, like I, I like I, I left my wife. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. single. I could do what I want and I was doing, and I still do what I want. So it's like, yeah, I could, I could just do what I want. And so that was kind of the, the be all end all of it. It wasn't much more than that. And so when she said, hey, I can't see anymore. I'm getting, getting, together, getting back together with this guy. I thought she meant the dude she sold the house with in Palm Springs. Oh, Daryl. Because she never met, she never mentioned Travis. And then when and she told- Wait, did you run in the same circles as him Yeah, we worked all? in the same company. I worked, I worked okay, on Eagles yeah. t- still today. I, work, I, do, I do employee benefits with, with, with the company. You know? Wow. And so he and I, we, we had the same friends in common, but he and I were never friends. This is pre-Jody. We were never friends. Because mm-hmm. he had this Mormon judgmental thing going anyway. Mm-hmm. So he didn't like guys like me and I won't name names cause you know, I don't respect their privacy, but he didn't like guys like mm-hmm. me and my friends, me mm-hmm. and my pagan heathen friends who drank, <laughs> smoked pot and did all oh, these yes. pagan heathen things, you know, and he was supposed to be this choir boy, which to his credit, mm-hmm. you know, when they, when they scoured his, his computer, they didn't find a fucking shred of porn, Not I know. one shred of porn with mm-hmm. me. If, if I die, <laughs> I got special folders and they'll find them. <laughs> And then, Do you, you have know, friends that will come into your house and delete them before they find your body? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I should let them know which folders they are, though, because yeah. like nobody <laughs> knows. And like, I, it's like it's like that uh, that Bill Hicks joke where like you know my mom hears about it, she drops dead, then she's chasing me around heaven with a brush whacking my ass. How dare you? Hey, mom, it's free. I downloaded it for free. <laughs> you know, but um, but yeah, he didn't even have that stuff going on, right? And so, um, I would even have a little bit of not. Porn, porn, but I like to read like literotica type porn because that's sure. my the way my my brain works that I would be embarrassed by. <laughs> well, my theory, my know? theory about my theory about him was he probably just had it in his brain, mm-hmm. and you know he's a guy. He's not, it's not like he doesn't masturbate. Every guy whacks off. You know, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So Every he girl probably does too. yeah. Well, he probably <laughs> felt guilty. He probably felt guilty and mm-hmm. didn't want it on the computer to be a reminder of his sin or something. You know, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. But but then when they didn't find anything, I'm like, all right, well, at least he was consistent. But he didn't mm-hmm. he didn't like me or my ilk, you know. He he didn't like our our crew, and which is fine. And I I didn't know that until after because I he and I had friends in common, mm-hmm. and they were like you know Jack Mormons. They weren't like real Mormons. His buddies that were my buddies were just guys that used to drink and party and everything else too. But they came up Mormon. And mm-hmm. then they got early release for time served. So we, we found common ground because I got early release <laughs> for time served. So we would drink and party, and have a good time. But he wasn't into that. And so, mm-hmm. and I didn't find out until after the whole thing that, you know, he, he didn't like me. He didn't like these other guys, but I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And also I didn't know that she had lied to him mm-hmm. about me and a bunch of other guys, you know, like saying that we were hitting on her and he was accusing or she was accusing guys who were married of wanting to fly her out to like, you know, New Mexico or wherever for the weekend. And all that did was incense him, but not enough to pull the trigger. So she became a Mormon for the guy. She became this, you know, quasi porn star for the guy. She did all this shit for the guy and he still didn't want to, you know, pull the trigger and commit. And it was, it was, it was just a tragedy. The whole thing was just a fucking tragedy. And it was, it was a drag because what pissed me off about that day, when I think about it, is just like a couple of years ago, I got out of a thing. Right. And Mm -hmm. I broke up with her and it didn't Mm -hmm. end well. And she wasn't 12 either. She wasn't a freshman at UT. Like the the things Mm -hmm. I've gone through with women, by the way, if if I'm dating a 19 year old freshman, that's what I get. Okay, fine. But when you're 51 years old, 45 years old, I I, I expect you to just, I don't know, like behave like a 51 year old. And Mm -hmm. she, she she came to my house and announced a couple of times and, you know, it got real creepy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the fuck, dude? Uh, you know, I was like, and unlike, you know, Travis, I was like, she's never come in my house again. I don't mm-hmm. care how horny I get. I'm never going to text her again. I'm never, ever, ever nothing again because it didn't end well. And then she got weird. 
And with him to let her in the house after all the, you know, breaking in and all this shit, I was just like, dude, you know what? He wasn't thinking, you know? And I don't know, man. It's, it's, it, 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 what angers me is I, I just had a friend who lost a son about three weeks ago to cancer, mm. a young kid, and just pisses me off. Um, I just had a very, my, my mentee in my life just lost her boyfriend, uh, love of her life, nine of, of nine years, uh, just bought a house together one week before he was diagnosed with brain cancer, died within four months. So. Uh. And this Ugh. kid never, this kid never got a break. He was sick his whole life. Right. So mm-hmm. anyway, I say all that to say that, and I've lost people to illness, right. You know, mm-hmm. AIDS, cancer, whatever. It's a loss and it sucks. It's different when it's a murder. And I didn't learn that lesson until I went through this. And then, and mm-hmm. then when I showed up to testify in the penalty phase, cause I'd never met his family before, you know, and I, you know, and when I testified in the mistrial attempt, um, in 2013, that was on the phone the, you know, they didn't have me fly in for that. They had me do it on the phone. So I didn't meet anybody. And then this, so when I testified in the penalty phase, the family was there, you know, his sister, his brother-in-law, you know, and I was just like, oh, and I'm just like watching these people. And I'm like, God damn it. You know, it's like, this is a different thing than an illness. Not that it, mm-hmm. it's, not that it's. It's not better or worse. It just, it's just, it's just different. You know? No, I, 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 um, I could not agree with you more on that. And actually just, I want to say one week ago, emailed Sky Hughes and, and just said, you know, I have all these people dying around me, you know, COVID or, you know, it just seems to be like a, a rash of like, you know, cancers and all these different things. And I said, you know, like it, it, you, you, you dealt with that the same, you know, like I, I'm still bothered by the person in my life who committed suicide at 25. This, this was like now 14 or 15 years ago, you know? So like when something like murder that's so preventable and so, you know, it, it just, the, the ripple effects of it are so sure. tragic. Sure. If, if that's the, if that's the only reason I write the books is, is just to show that people, uh, that this, these, Types of crimes, you know, uh, taking away a life pre- prematurely just affects so many people on so many levels for the rest of their lives. It's, it's just the most destructive thing you can do. And I think there's only two things in life you can't undo, and that's bring a child into this world and take someone out of this world. Mm-hmm. Anything else you can make up for in life. You can, you know, try and make amends. You can apologize. You can change your, you know, who you are. But those are the two things you can't change in this world. Right. And so when you take someone else's life out like that, um, you know, it, there can't be a word. You know, the punishment is, is what it should be, which is sitting in the jail cell for the rest of your life or being sentenced to death yourself. Sure. Sure. No, and, and we're wrapping up in the next last couple minutes here because we're going to, you know, uh, do something else, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, cause I, cause, cause I want, I want to get into, um, what your, what your responses, what responses you have seen to your work, you know, because it's, okay. it's, a, it's a different culture. Yeah. This, this, this true crime business. I like, I, and we'll, we'll get into that in the next little bit here, but um, mm-hmm. guys, uh, we have uh, been talking to Shanna Hogan. If you uh, are listening to the show right now, we're going to be going to part two, which will come out in, a, in the next handful of days here. But uh, again, patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to sleep tight. Wow.